sorry for this delay. I completely forgot about the class. Just remembered and ran back. Uh, that's the reason for the delay. Not a long cup of tea. I just forgot. So we start again. Okay, this is where we stopped. Uh, we have an expression for v, and uh, it is in the case where we looked only at the uh, zone element. We saw looked at a case where we don't have a made element. We did that basically because uh, that is what uh, is generally of interest. If you look at the classical solutions of squared group and so on, you will find that we basically looked at the zonal events, easterlies and westerlies. <coughs> okay. Now, suppose you look at the steady state limit, that is omega going to 0. So, he is saying sigma goes to 0 and a by c squared goes to 0. Now, what happens? Uh, the difference now is that beta is non-zero. This is the expression we had for p, 1 by beta, e power minus i sigma t minus i omega alpha squared by beta into x, integral from infinity to x, c of x prime y, exponent i omega alpha squared by beta x prime, uh, how did this term come in? This term should not be there. I don't think this term should be there. It's part of this omega, uh, dx prime. Or, no, I don't think that is right. This expression to be. <coughs> yeah, it was minus i k x prime. Where, yeah, so that term is not there. Mm, there is an error here. This will simply be e power i omega alpha squared by beta x prime. This term is not there. This term is not there, e power a by c squared cr into x prime. Uh, because you have omega here, this term is not there. <coughs> this is just a repeat of what we had written down earlier. Now we take the limit sigma going to 0 and a by c squared going to 0, which basically is omega going to 0. So this exponent drops out, this exponent drops out, this is anyway not there. So you are left with p tends to, uh, we have an f squared coming from here, so f squared by beta, integral from infinity to x. If you take the f squared out and uh, take the curl, take the dot product, you get gx by f minus dou by dou y of capital F by small f. Close bracket and that's integrated with respect to x prime. So this is the pressure field. Basically you get a curl and you are integrating from the eastern boundary to wherever you are interested. <coughs> now what happens to v? in this case. This is the expression we have for v. Again just written down from what we had earlier. e power minus i sigma t by beta open brace bracket open square bracket minus i omega alpha squared by beta f exponent minus i omega alpha squared by beta into x integral from infinity to x e of x prime y exponent i omega alpha squared by beta into x prime dx prime close square bracket plus gx minus f5 close brace bracket. When sigma and omega tend to 0, the first term just disappears because you have an omega multiplying out here. And when that goes to 0, all you are left with is gx minus f5 by beta. Or rather v is, or beta into v is curled out. That's the square root equation. <coughs> So that's the steady solution. Non steady solution gives you the Rossby wave. So if you take a Laplace transform, you get uh, the result as a function of time. If you take the limit t going to infinity, you are left with beta v equals curl tau. The transient includes the Rossby wave. <coughs> so this is basically how you get a western boundary current. The square root solution gives you the interior flow. That's all you're going to get from here. It is the Rossby wave that carries the information to the west. And 
there is a finite time that the Rossby wave needs to cross the basin. So even if you have a steady wind, it will take that much time to set up the response. But once that Rossby wave has reached the western boundary and set up the response, if your wind is steady, then <coughs> this is the solution. Beta V at any location is just curled tau. So any location x comma y is influenced not only by the wind at that location, because this gx minus is given by this integral. We started off by looking at uh, the homogeneous equations to see what kind of uh, waves are permitted. We saw that uh, you get uh, gravity waves and Rossby waves. Gravity waves have sigma greater than f. You know, on a beta plane, it can be slightly lower than f. <coughs> so beta effect distorts the Rossby wave with gravity wave to a very small extent. In that, you can understand if sigma is greater than f, then the wave is not going to feel rotation as much. So the beta effect, which is a perturbation on that f, is going to have a much smaller uh, second order uh, impact on the gravity wave. And that is why the gravity wave is uh, distorted very little by the beta effect. When you look at the Rossby wave, you get two parts to it. One is a westward propagating part, which is non-dispersive. And that is for small case, k nearly 0. And the other one is uh, eastward propagating that is for large case, so short waves. <coughs> if you look at the simpler equations, which came from dropping ut and vt, you saw that gravity waves are gone. You no longer have them in the dispersion relation. But one more consequence is that the eastward propagating Rossby wave is up. You were left with only the westward propagating Rossby wave. And uh, <coughs> uh, that tells you what are the consequences of dropping some of these terms. The next thing we did is to look at the forced response. We retained ut and vt, but assumed our forcing to be independent of x and y. And uh, whether you take only f or only g or both f and g, you basically get two parts to the solution. <coughs> One is uh, Ekman drift, which is to the right of the wind in the northern hemisphere, to the left in the southern hemisphere. And the other thing is the inertial oscillation which rotates clockwise in the northern hemisphere, anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere. The next thing we did is to drop ut and vt. So we filtered out the inertial currents and uh, gravity waves and short Rossby waves. <coughs> Let's first look at the case where beta is 0. And when we did that, we got Ekman pumping. So you have a curl of wind stress. And basically, it, if it's anticyclonic, it will cause downwelling. So you have a negative vertical velocity at the base for mix here. And if you take the other case where you have a curl tau being uh, positive, it's cyclonic wind curl, then you have uh, an upwelling velocity at the base of the mix here. on beta. We said let beta be non-zero. And we find that we get uh, Why is this the same? Why is one thing? We can't give it a right place. Hmm. Yeah. Used to fax immediately. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. 
and uh, when we set the beta non zero we get an uh, we get a differential equation that has uh, an x derivative this term beta px we took a Fourier transform and we ended up with a solution that involves this integral <coughs> and if you look at this term e power minus i sec alpha squared by beta the x plus beta by alpha squared t it's basically Ross Beebe because uh, cr that's given by beta by alpha minus beta by alpha squared so you get that by setting dx by dt equals uh, minus to zero and differentiating x with respect to t you get uh, dx by dt is minus beta by alpha squared that's cr and that's minus beta c squared by f squared. That's the speed of a non-dispersive westward propagating Gauss wave. <coughs> and uh, you can see it's non-dispersive. Sigma by k is CR. And uh, CR is minus beta c squared by f squared, less than zero. Then we figure out how to set the lower limit of the integral. It has to be from uh, east to west. So the lower limit went to infinity. Then we basically got p, and uh, then we used uh, p to get v. <coughs> we looked at two cases. One uh, was just um, <coughs> to match what we had done earlier. There we set uh, only zonal winds. And uh, when you do that, you get a solution. That's like this. You get two integrals one for f by x and the other for f. <coughs> the other case was of greater interest. We took the steady state limit, omega going to zero, so sigma and a by c squared both tend to zero. And uh, we find that the pressure field at any location x is dependent on the curl of the wind field. But strictly this is called Ekman pumping because you have this capital F by small f differentiated with respect to y. So <coughs> The pressure field at any location depends on what happens to the east of that location and at that location. So it's not just a locally forced solution. There is a component that uh, we call remotely forced. There is a response coming from farther east. So you have a wind stress curl field to the east of the location of interest. And after some finite time given by uh, the wave speed that you have, CR, you will find that it has uh, it triggers a response uh, where you are, which is the region of interest. Then we looked at what happens to v, and we find that in the limit, when omega goes to zero, v tends to one by beta into curl tau. That's just the square root equation. <coughs> so this is basically the solution to the square root uh, system. The transient response is the Ross Beebe. So if you give me the wind field uh, f comma g, I mean I can always find p v, p and v, and I can always find u. So given the wind field, you can get the solution for the system. I mean all you have to do is evaluate the integral. If you don't have a neat form for f or g, if g is non-zero, then you will end up having to evaluate the integrals numerically. That's all. But that's about all you have to do. And basically, this is what was done in that uh, first paper on the East India Coastal Current, Dynamics of the East India Coastal Current, Part 1. One part of the solution was basically this one. And the reason for doing that is that an earlier paper in 93 by Shetty and his colleagues looked at the steady relation, courtesy Svedro. And there was a comment that uh, you basically have an unsteady system. You have a seasonal cycle of the winds. So how valid is the uh, sweater balance? <coughs> so we just put in the time dependence and that's it. So there's a finite time because the wave takes a finite time CR. I mean it's uh, <coughs> the distance to travel divided by CR. That's the time taken by the wave from wherever it is triggered to reach the western boundary. 
and uh, that is the time it will take to influence the boundary current. So if you set up a strong wind curl, it's not going to have an immediate impact on the western boundary because the wave, Rossby wave takes a finite time to go to the western boundary. <coughs> if the Bay of Bengal is a small basin, this response is well within a month to a couple of months. And you have a strong wind curl sitting on the central bay, you will see a response after some time at the eastern boundary. <coughs> and this happens for each mode. The first mode travels faster. It's beta c squared by f squared. So the Rossby wave speed decreases as the square of the gravity wave speed. So if c is what, 2 meters per second for mode 1, it is usually of the order of uh, about a meter per second for mode 2. Then uh, the time taken for the second mode will be 4 times that of the second first mode. And it will keep increasing for the other modes. So even if you look at a small basin like the <coughs> Bay of Bengal, if you take higher order modes, the wave part of those modes will take a long time to cross the basin. But then they are also strongly damped because you have A by C squared as the friction term. And if you have Laplacian friction, then it goes as K squared. Higher order modes always have uh, lower wavelengths, higher wave numbers. So they are damped faster, so they won't propagate far. So if you look at uh, processes like equipment pumping, they are generally going to affect the western boundary current only through the higher modes. The higher order modes will be more local because the waves won't propagate far away from the region where they are triggered. Anyway, that's all I have for today. We will take a look at the animations on Monday. I hope the link will be good enough for that. Uh, so if there are no questions from your side, I am done with lecture 17. What is that? Mm, so, sir, so, region types course. Yeah. So, timing is not fixed. Yeah. <coughs> Most likely, it comes to the region. Wanna? Yeah. So, it's added for? Submit them. It's added for. Okay, they have an exam here on Monday. So, put that you teach me. So, that he might send you on Monday. Maybe yeah, we can change the fabric. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we'll change the fabric. Next week is full of holidays. I don't want to miss a day. So we'll meet at uh, 4 p.m. There's some exam here at 2.30, so 4 o'clock uh, on Monday. I hope we should be, we'll be able to see the animations and if that works well, then within an hour we'll be able to go through all of them for the interior ocean. <coughs> so with this, the interior ocean part is over. We will uh, uh, move away from the interior of the ocean now and go towards the coastal regime. So in the next theory class, we'll be looking at what happens when you have a boundary, a continental boundary. So one of the conditions, either LX is much greater than C by F, or Ly is much greater than C by F, will have to be relaxed. The length scale, one of the length scales will have to be uh, allowed to be comparable to the characteristic length scale C by F, which is the Rossby radius of deformation. That is the major difference that you will see. <coughs> okay, so there are no questions, we'll call it a day. T party is saying it's telling to change it. Call it a day. Okay, so it would help if you can just click through the notes. And yeah, just remember this term doesn't exist. It should be scratched out.
just one more thing in case uh, you tend to forget it. The HIG notes defines I omega in a different fashion. Uh, the way it is defined here and in the interior ocean notes of McCready is a more logical way. It's the way it's usually defined in physics. And that's why we have stuck to that. So though we derived the HR LCS model uh, system using the HIG notes, the definition of omega we will not use from there. It uh, changes the sign and it's a pretty nasty thing. So what is normally a westward propagating wave ends up as eastward propagating in the other way around. So keeping track of those signs is a nightmare. This is more clean, this is logical. You get a negative sign for a westward propagating wave. Okay then, so see you on Monday, 4 o'clock.